Hello everyone and welcome to the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a crafty podcast featuring my crochet, knitting, sewing and any other creative bits that I may get up to. Um, you'll be able to find the show notes for this podcast on my website which is cherryheart.co.uk that's where I'll put all the information about the things I talk about and the names of patterns, yarns and so on and so forth um, so anything useful will be found there and that's also where you can find my uh, patterns and tutorials um, you'll be able to navigate this video using the timestamps either in the down bar below where I have the chapters listed out for you or you can just navigate by putting your cursor along the bottom of the screen here and you can jump to the sections that are most interesting to you. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, that's where I'm most prolific as Sandra Cherry HRT and elsewhere around the web I'm Cherry Heart. Um, so welcome, welcome back to another podcast from me. Welcome to the craft room. Um, how have you been keeping? Well, I hope. Um, here it's been, it's been all right, I think. I can't remember when I last even spoke to you, so I don't know what's happened since. It feels like we've been very busy, though. There's been a lot going on, and um, yeah, just lots to sort of do, lots of... Um, you know, household administration, general adulting, I guess, which is always very tedious and not very interesting to talk about, so I won't. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've been doing something a little bit more entertaining. Um, I've got my little puppers down here. He's snoring away. Snoring away like Billy O, so hopefully you can't hear him chundering along. But... Um, when I was having problems on my last podcast with the sounds, um, quite a few were saying, oh no, I couldn't hear anything. So I think the microphone does do quite a good job of just isolating my voice and blocking out the other noise. So I'm going to assume that's working this week. Where to begin? That's always the question. Um, I'm going to start with something I've got in progress because I fear it may not be in progress for much longer. Normally that's a good thing, isn't it? Because it means you've finished it, but maybe not in this case. So if you've been here before, um, you will have seen this. It's my growing cardigan. It's, I'm going to scoot back so you can see a little bit more. And now I can't see what you can see because I'm holding it up in front of me. Um, as you can see, I hope, I've progressed quite far with it. I've got the length. Let's come back in. Yeah, back in. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done the um, hem and I've got this lovely, sorry, needles, eye cord binding, which I'm struggling to show you. There we go, it's that. And it's got um, the ribbing. I'm not doing very well here, am I? The ribbing is quite um, subtle. So you've only got one purl stitch between, you know, they're quite spaced out. So this is to mirror the sort of pattern they've got on the shoulders here so that's I quite like that that's quite nice because I changed my um sort of button band area that's also supposed to be that same ribbon I changed mine to garter just to make a bit of a contrast and because I'd seen it on someone else's project that I quite liked so I carried that down to the end and then did the ribbon from that point on um, so I've got my pockets done and I've done my little pocket lining ready to sew in. So that's all ready to go and I've started my sleeve. So it's coming on nicely. My problem is I haven't tried this on since I was thinking about starting the pockets and I about here and I've made it so I made it a bit longer than the pattern states 
um, before I started the pocket. So there's two versions, a shorter version and a longer version. And the length I've gone is actually between the two. I think it's, I think it was halfway between the two. Um, so I made it a bit longer because I'm a bit um, longer in the body usually. I'm slightly taller than most patterns seem to cater for. And when I tried it on, it seemed quite high. So I thought, yeah, I'll definitely need a bit more. And then by the time I've got the pocket on, that'll be right. So I started knitting the sleeve and there's, it just seemed really wide. And I'm not quite sure what else prompted me, but I went to try it on again and it's just absolutely humongous. Um, so basically I'm thinking of frogging it. I think I've decided that I will probably frog it. Yeah, I'm sort of 80% decided that I will frog it. So the problem is, I think now it's got all the length on and all the weight of the yarn, it's actually pulling down quite a lot and it's really quite long. So it's the way it's constructed, it doesn't actually have a neck hole as such. So the button bands start, that's sort of the middle. So when you wear it, it kind of, it sits back a little bit. So the back sits a lot longer, the back hem at the bottom sits longer than the front, which I like, that's really nice. But that means because this is so long now, it's basically as long as the long version. It's the, um, it, the back goes, you know, the length of it is under my bum, which is longer than I wanted. Um, so that's one thing. So I could shorten the body up, that's fine. But now I'm trying on, now I started a bit of sleeves and I'm trying on, I'm seeing how big this arm ha hole is. So before when I tried it up, obviously it sort of all curls up like this, doesn't it? It all curls in on itself. And it was sort of sitting and I didn't, I don't know if I just didn't notice or because the other weight wasn't there, it wasn't pulling down as much. But when I put it on now, the armhole is absolutely massive. Like it's halfway down my body practically. I mean, I can't even show you on the screen. It must be about sort of down here. Now, I mean, I don't mind a wide arm, but like it's so wide. So when I'm... So now I've got this sleeve on and it's sort of pulling it out and I can see how it's actually going to sit. It's looking, I see it doesn't look too bad just holding it up, but if you think that this shoulder point is quite far down my arm and then I've got the sleeve down here, like I haven't got Trying to fit this on. Sorry to look at the screen so much, but I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see what you can see. Um, let's do it on this arm, and then hope maybe it'll fit on a bit better. You know, if you think the shoulder is ending down my arm, the arm is already sort of to here, <laughs> and it's so so wide. And I've got a lot of decreases to do. A little sort of in knitting at least that decreases to do. So the sleeves, if I followed the pattern, would be over my hands by the time I'd finished with them. And again, I don't mind a long sleeve. I quite like it, you know, even up to here, that would be, I'd be fine with that. But if you bear in mind, I haven't even blocked this yet as well. So I mentioned this on Instagram and people were saying that I could do, well, A, I could, um, do the increases more frequently, which I could, although as you can see they're pretty frequent as it is. I think they're every, I think there's five rows between or you do it every fifth row, I can't quite remember. Um, so I'm doing them quite frequently, but I could, you know, I could do more, but it's going to be very, it's going to be a very sharp decrease. I don't know, would that look weird? But also if you bear in mind how low this sort of arm is coming and how it just looks a bit like I've got something out of the Lost Property box and it doesn't really fit me <laughs> is what it looks like. You know, oversized is one thing and I like oversized things, but this doesn't just look oversized. This looks like 
you're wearing your mum's cardi and you're a toddler kind of thing, you know. <laughs> it just looks a bit wrong. Um, oh yeah, and so the other thing I could do with the sleeves is kind of leave it and then kind of just cinch them in for the wrist, so like a kind of a bishop's, a bit like this sort of sleeve really, I guess, and have it as like a bishopy sleeve. Again, which I could do. Maybe it's worth at least taking this sleeve to that point since I've come this far to see what I think that looks like. But I must admit I've really lost heart with it. Um, so yeah. Oh gauge, that was the other thing I was going to say. So width wise my gauge is perfect. I did, did I do a swatch or did I just start and then see does this gauge look right? I think I might have actually done a swatch. Um, yeah, and I had perfect gauge and I've still got really great gauge. You know, if I block this and measure this now, my gauge will be great. But the trouble is on the body, where the weight of it pulls down, my, so my even though my stitch count is right for the gauge, my row count is like a million miles off. So that's why it's turned out way, way too long. My row gauge is completely out. So I think I'm having a problem. It's going to be one of those situations where the yarn I've chosen is a yarn substitution. And it's obviously not right for this pattern. Because the issue I'm having is the yarn I'm using is a double knit yarn and in this pattern she uses a double knit yarn. So I thought, fine, but I'm just looking for the gauge to try and tell you what's going on. Right, so the gauge, so she's given a before wash gauge of 19 stitches by 28 rows in stockinette stitch and after wash 18 stitches 27 rows. Now I'm not sure about the rows but 18 stitches in 4 inches or 10 centimeters that's roughly an Aran weight gauge and this is a double knit yarn I'm using so I did have to go up quite a few needle sizes to get gauge so what she recommended for this 4.5 yeah I'm using 5.5 and like I say, when I had my little square, that was fine, I think, because you sort of block it square, don't you, and pin it out, and that looked fine. But then when you actually have the weight hanging on it, it just goes... And those rows are just stretching out really terribly. So that's caused my problem. But I'm not quite sure what to do about it. So I did look at her yarn that she's used. She has used a super fine alpaca. She's got two together, so she's got a wool yarn and an alpaca yarn. So it's not like it's a mohair or anything really, really fluffy. I've had to look at it online and it doesn't look like especially fluffy. So this is, I don't know if you'll be able to see any fluff on this. Can you see a little bit on there? Um, it doesn't look much different to this visually, but obviously it's knitting up completely differently. So, in conclusion, I think if I frogged this and started again with smaller needles, but making the same size, I could get a cardigan that fit quite nicely. I think that would pull up the rows a bit and tighten everything up enough. So I wouldn't be knitting to gauge anymore. But given sort of the width I'm getting off of this thing and the sizes I'm getting at gauge, I'm thinking I could knit at a smaller gauge and I'd still get a cardigan that fit me really well. But my hesitation is obviously that that's a, going to be a bit of guesswork, isn't it? So yeah, I'm not quite sure what to do. If I end up having to re-knit it, which I haven't quite got the energy or enthusiasm for at this moment, <laughs> I'm going to have to frog the whole thing. If it's just no good 
and I do something else I'm going to have to frog the whole thing and the only way to avoid frogging the whole thing is to somehow make this work which like I say maybe it's worth trying the sleeve and see how that looks but I just feel like I'll try and put in a bit of footage of me wearing it so you can see what I mean so here we are um, so it's quite a sort of casual look cardigan as you can see it's quite long that's right down over my butt there um, so it's nice for a length for a long cardigan but I didn't want it sort of quite long that's like mid thigh there I kind of wanted it just below the waist so maybe about here um, and this is my sleeve as you can see it's already quite long even though I've got to do at least sort of half of that again before I even get to the ribbon um, and it's very very baggy I want a loose fit I don't want a tight fit but this is very loose and the arm you can see the armhole I'll show you on the other hand, it's sort of right down here so and this isn't a tight sleeve I'm wearing so that's where my arm actually ends but the sleeve hole is very low I guess when I pick up the stitches it'll bring it up a bit but yeah that's how it's looking at the moment. I don't know, what would you do? What do you think? Would you frog it? Up until recently that would have really, really annoyed me, the fact that I'd done all of this work and I have to frog it. I'd find that quite upsetting if I'm perfectly frank. Um, <laughs> but I found I'm not as concerned about it this time. Yes, it is really frustrating when I've put all that work in it and I was really sort of getting to the stage where I was ready for it to be over I really wanted it to be done and to get the project off the needles so to sort of realise that that's gone back to being absolutely ages away again is a bit you know bleh. but at the same time I've been in this situation where you know it's not quite right but you persevere anyway and you just I just end up not wearing the thing so it's pointless it's just be a waste of it'd still be a complete waste of time and the yarn so I may, I'm feeling like I'm, if it's not going to be right, I may as well just suck it up, frog it, and at some point, not immediately, at some point I'll think about making it again. I was thinking maybe the autumn, maybe after summer, that's a couple of months. Maybe, I'll, maybe the pain will have faded and I could knit it again then. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I think... I think that's the right, cho the right choice. What do you think? What would you do? I'm trying something new today with the camera. I've always had it on the automatic settings, but I'm trying to make a bit more effort to, um, you know, use the non-automatic settings for absolutely everything. So I've set my exposure, because normally I do this. And the exposure really blows out because of my dark hair there. So I'm hoping that that's not happening this time. Just a little side note there. And I'm also not sure, while we're talking about technical issues and cameras and things, I'm also not sure when I'll get this podcast up. Um, because my laptop has died, my faithful trusty laptop has conked out and I had to take it into the shop and see what they said and... Uh, Luckily it hadn't died completely because I I thought I might have lost everything which would have been awful because <laughs> I don't really back up properly. I know, I know you should but I just don't and I mean really. Um, yeah so that would have been quite devastating if that had all gone. So I have backed up now. But yeah so it was fine. Luckily it was just a display that's broken and something's wrong with the keyboard as well. But I managed, they managed to sort of get it up and running so that I could get the stuff off of it and back up my data properly. And now it's gone off to the repair shop to be fixed. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure when this will see the light of day, but 
at some point I'm going to get it back and then I'll be able to do it. Which is pointless telling you this because you won't see it until you see it and then you won't know it's been delayed. Ridiculous. Anyway, what should I tell you next? Let's do crochet next. There's not a lot to say here, just that I'm continuing on with my crochet star quilt. Um, five more squares done, so I've got a couple of blue ones. Oh, and another blue one in a slightly different shade and a couple of pink ones. I just haven't quite finished that one yet. I've just got to put those last three squares around. So it's getting nicely close to the old finish line on this one. If I put this with the ones I've already done, that will be 25 squares. So I'm almost there. Five more to go and I'll have my 30. Um, and then I'll be able to start joining. So my plan is... Oh, I've got a hair in it. Crocheting hair into your project. Not good, is it? <laughs> um, it happens though, doesn't it? It happens to me anyway. Okay, it's come out. That's good. Um, yeah, so my plan next is to lay out what I've got here and kind of get my colour order sorted and then I'm going to decide what colours my last five squares based on sort of finishing, you know, if I lay all these out in a pleasing way, sort of how is best to finish it. Because I don't know if I, I've got three colours broadly, the blue, grey and the pink. And my original idea was to just do 10, 10 and 10. But one of the blues slash greys is very similar. It's very bluey grey, so I'm not quite sure what category that fits into. So I might maybe do a couple more pinks. So I'm just going to see how it looks when it lays out and play it by ear. And then just make up the last ones that I need. Because all the colours are a little bit of a hodgepodge. And um, because I'm just using stash of hand dyed yarns for this so this is what I've got left let's get this so you can see uh, that's what I've got left now so yeah there's all kinds of lovely lovely ones in there so there's a bit of a mishmash but I'm hoping that that will enhance it rather than detract the fact that there's sort of subtle variations in colour so I've kept track of Here's my little scribbles of, I might make four of these, or I might only make three. <laughs> that was my thinking. So yes, but really enjoying that one now. I've really, I think I said last time that it took me a while to settle into making the squares because it is quite, it takes quite a long time to make one of those blocks up. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I've sped up as well. That always helps as you go through, you kind of speed up, don't you? But yeah, I've really settled into the process of doing it and just really enjoying them now. Um, yeah, so that's progressing on. Oh, and while I'm on the subject of the crochet star quilt, I have now done a tutorial for these half squares and the blocks. So I made up some other little squares here just in a slightly thicker yarn just for the tutorial so it would be a bit easier to see. So yeah, so I've got, I already had a tutorial up on how I make my solid granny squares. I put that up when I made my Battenberg blanket. So that was already there. So I referenced that in the video because if you don't make your squares the same way I do, this, the way I describe doing this might not make 100% sense. I mean it mostly will, mostly it's the theory is the same but it's just the way I start and sort of end my squares in a particular place and that kind of makes more sense when I'm talking about this tutorial. So that already exists so now I've done a tutorial on how to do that lovely colour change and get that nice sharp crisp uh, line between them. So that's up and I've also put a left hand version up as well so I always try to do both so I've got it in right-handed and I've got it in left-handed. And then after that one, I've got how I actually assemble them 
into these blocks like that. Um, not that there's much to it, but I'm just showing you how I'm doing it. So it's just I'm assembling them in a certain order because I want the joins to not show up very much. So if I use pink yarn, it would show on the white and white would show on the pink and things like that. So I'm just doing it a certain way. So that's what I've got up there. So I know some people were hoping I would do a tutorial on that. So I finally have, my goodness. I did a thing, would you believe it? So while I was filming the tutorial for that, I thought, oh, you know the other thing I've been always meaning to do a tutorial for? And that's just my classic granny square. So like I said, I've got my uh, solid granny squares on there. But I haven't got like a classic, holy, my how I do these. I've got photo tutorials on my website, Cherry Hall. .co.uk. Um, but yeah, I've never put a video tutorial up and that's something else I get asked for, for a lot. So I thought I would do a video on that. So I made a few sample squares for that as well, just to show how I make mine. Again, not that it's sort of revolutionary. A lot of people know how to make these. There's lots of videos and patterns for it, but it's just the way I make mine. Everyone has their slight little per what's the word preferences little um can't think of the word not perks that's not a thing quirks that's the word everyone has the little quirks and preferences so i've got a video on how i make that uh, in one color right and left handed and then i did another video as well just to show how i do it when i've got the color changes so how i add the new color yarn in and just a bit about how I wove in the ends as well. So again, just because it's something people ask. So I thought I'd put that in. So if it's something people would like to know, would find useful. So yes. So they're on YouTube, uh, on this channel. Um, I haven't got a separate channel for tutorials or anything. And I, but I have got a playlist. If you sort of look down on my you know my channel page if you scroll down there's a crochet tutorials playlist so they're all in there for you and sewing let's talk about my quilt so this is my alice caroline quilt my flower garden uh quilt which was last year's subscription one of last year's subscription quilts. So I have started the quilting and you're not going to be able to see it, I don't think. Let's see if I can get, there's a bit where it looks a little bit more obvious. Let's see if I can get it to show up on the camera. I think that's a big fat, so it's just going inside. The lines here. So in the booklet they tell you to basically trace around the outside of the Liberty fabric, um, sorry the inside, just the inside of the outside line of the Liberty fabric and then around the inside of either the middle hexagon if it's a hexagon or star if it's a star. So this one's a star one. So I've gone round uh, the inside of the star on that one. So that's what I'm doing. I'm following what it says in the book um, And I'm hand quilting it all now So my original idea was to do it on the machine because I thought it's all I've ever done before and The idea of hand quilting it seemed absolutely monstrous at the time But we talked about it and I sort of I've come around to the idea, but now I've started. Oh my god I love it I love it. I'm not great at it, but I love it. I like how it looks. I even like doing it, even though it's a bit of a pain. <laughs> um, but I am really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying... Oh, will it show up on this? Look, it's blue. Ah, look, there you go. There you can see my tiny little stitches. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying the process of doing it. And actually, it feels like... It's not going that slowly. It feels like it won't take me that long to finish. I mean, compared to what I was thinking, I was thinking I could be doing that for years. 
but yeah, I'm you know, I'm sure it'll take me a few months to get it done, but it's coming along quicker than I thought. So yeah, I'm actually really enjoying that. So my only quandary with this one was the colour. So here's my thread that I'm using. I'm not sure if this is the best thing for the Liberty fabric, if I'm perfectly frank. So these are my lovely thread threads threads I've got here. So it's very pretty. So I have got I've got a selection here. Some of them are DNC and um, DMC, and some of them are anchor, I believe. But it's cotton pearl. Let's see if I can get so that will appear. Is that showing up? And it's number eight. So the number is the thickness of yarn. So this is an eight. Now I've been getting this for quite a few years because way back when, many years ago, I think I read about it in some blog post and someone was saying that's what they used. And um, I think it was just for sort of smaller bits, but they said that was, you know, a nice sort of weight of uh, thread to use for quilting. So that's what I've sort of got in stash if you like so I have a range of colours and when I make up sort of little more littler projects these are you know I use these to decorate them um why am I pausing I don't know what I'm saying so yes yeah, so that's what I had so that's what I figured I would use my only reservation is with this Liberty fabric being so fine I'm not 100% certain that I'm using the very best thing for this. I don't know. I was just thinking, I wonder what she says in the instructions. I bet there's some advice about it. And I didn't think about it because I just figured, oh, I've got some of that. I'll just use that. Anyway, so if you are thinking, is that the best thing to use? The answer is, I don't know. But it seems to be working out all right. It's I'm pulling the knots through from the back because I wasn't confident in my ability to do it nicely from the front. Um, and I do sometimes struggle to sort of get the knot to come through. So I'm, that's part of what's making me wonder if it is a little bit too thick. But I don't know. Um, so I'm going to show you the back. So my yes, yeah, so my only quandary was I had all of these colours. My initial idea was because I've got all these different colours of hexagons on the front, is that I would use a different colour of thread to sort of match whichever hexagon I was doing. But I started just by chance. I was doing one that had pinky tones in it, so I started with this pinky shade. And when I turned to the back to see how ghastly or otherwise the back was this was what I saw and it just blends in really really nicely with this backing sheet that I've got on here and when I saw that I thought oh that does look really nice though if the whole thing was like that on the back that could potentially look really pretty I mean there's some few puckers and things going on here it's like I said it's I'm not the best at I'm not sure I'm doing the best job. I've never hand quilted an entire quilt before. It's just this bit really. Um, oh, I'm gonna have to change the battery. Let's pause. Uh, right, we're back. What was I saying? Yes, yeah, so I've never hand quilted before, so I'm not sure what the quality is going to be like. But yeah, I really liked how that was looking. But then I was thinking, well, it's on the back. So what difference does it really make if I have different colors on the back? I don't know, but I was quite struck with this idea. So I asked my family and they were like, oh, it's the back, it doesn't matter, just do the different colours. I was like, yeah, I guess, but it would be nice if the back looked nice as well. So I Instagram, I did an Instagram poll to see what you guys thought and it was pretty much a landslide victory for sticking to the pale pink. So I have, I think, it's that thing, you know when you ask the question you go, which are these two options? Because I just can't decide. And then someone says option A and you're like, right, yeah, I want to do option B. And it's only when they say one that you're like, yeah, I know what I want now. It was that kind of scenario. Um, 
so I'm holding this up so you can see my quilting but you probably can't really see my quilting so some of it isn't too bad some of it looks quite neat even in places there's a bit there that doesn't look too bad Ooh, there we go and some of it is a little bit not so good but and yeah that pucker has annoyed me it's a bit there and there's a little bit on the front where I haven't got it as nice as I wanted either the trouble is I didn't notice at the time and now I've sort of done so much that I can't bear to go back to change it <laughs> I know I probably should but there's too many bits sewn in and I'd have to undo so much and I'm like no it's only a little bit I can live with it it's my first hand quilted project so I can live with a slight imperfection there um yeah but really enjoying that so I guess I'll just chug along with that now it'll take me a little while but I guess the next stage to show is probably when that's done okay so next we are on to another sewing project and um, again if you've been here before there's a pattern I am trying to make this is a version of it it's the, that's a Merchant and Mills pattern and it's Hattie and Ellis the sort of two variations in one and I'm trying to make the Ellis I think the one with sleeves anyway if you know it um, but I'm having a bit of a trouble with the fit so I made up um, a 14 and that didn't f I just couldn't raise my arms um, so then I sort of modify it to try and bring the top of the arms in, bring the shoulders in and that worked pretty well, that's this version, it worked really well but it's just made it, it's taken a little bit too much out of here and it's made it tight across the bust. So I thought I would try another pattern, so I tried this one which is Indigo by Tilly and Buttons, so I just did the bodice, again I've used my old um, bedroom duvets which is what this is also is I've been keeping my old duvets for years since we first had a house I've kept the old ones and sometimes we use them as you know sort of dust sheets for decorating but um, yeah some of the other ones I've just kept just because there's so much fabric in them I thought oh, maybe you know I'll use it for something well it's come into its own and I'm using them for all my little sort of test samples so yeah and so again, as you see, very similar sort of top, it's got long sleeves. Or you can make a, this, you know, like patterns, there's variations, but this is the long sleeve one. So I've made this up, I've made the size 14, because that's what kind of my measurements are. And when it's on, it fits beautifully, it looks lovely on, it looks, it's a really nice fit. Yep, happy with that. But again, I've got the problems with, I can't, it's even worse than the other one. I can't raise my arms above, like, about here. That is like, it, the fabric is, it feels like I'm going to rip it, to be honest. So I guess that just means it's too small. I don't know. And then when I come to take it off over my head again, because there's no fastening, it's, like, really hard to pull it off. So even though it feels like it fits beautifully when it's on, I guess that just means it's way too small so I'd have to make like a loads bigger size than it says should fit me I think I well it only goes up to no what does it I was gonna say it only goes up to 18 I'm not sure that's true I think that's the Ellis and Hattie pattern this one I think goes up quite a bit more I think I was thinking I would have to make at least an 18 which you know fine whatever it doesn't matter but it's not what you're saying should fit me by the measurements. So yeah, I, I sewed that up and was a bit annoyed about it really. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it fits, but and the arms are very thin. But then I think I must have thicker arms because I found that on the other one as well that, you know, I needed to make the sleeve wider to get it to sort of go over my arms. I mean, I don't think, have I got thick arms? Are my arms fat? <laughs> Apparently they are. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have made a thing, but it's not really 
a thing I'm ever going to wear or use, so it's a bit of an experiment. But I have now drawn up draft pattern number 698 of this, <laughs> um, which I'm hopefully is going to be the winner. So it'll be my third try on this. So what I thought was, I tried the 14, that wasn't quite right. I tried my modified 14 and that was really close, but not quite right. So I've made a 16 and I've done my modifications to the 16. So I'm hoping that that will make it up onto my shoulders so I can actually raise my arm. But because it's a bigger size, it will leave me with a bit more in the bust zone. So that's my plan. So I need to sew that up now. This one's got different, I was testing out different sleeve lengths to see what works. So yeah, probably shouldn't be spending this much time on making one thing, but I want it, I want it to be something I want to wear that I enjoy wearing that I, and if I made one of these other versions, I know in my heart of hearts I wouldn't actually wear the thing, so it'd be pointless. So yeah, I know I'm going round the houses by quite some margin, but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Probably shouldn't take you six months to make one dress, but hey ho. Um, and so the last thing to share is just some incoming goodies. I haven't had any yarn purchase incoming goodies other than I got a bunch of this white for my crochet style quilt. I haven't really bought anything exciting or interesting for ages. So I decided to have a bit of a splurge and I got me some bits. So I was looking on the Wool Warehouse website because I was using the Stylecraft Naturals Bambine, no not Bambino, Bamboo and Cotton which I really like. I was doing some experiments in that but I'm starting to get low on the colours so I thought I'll just top up on a few of the colours and then when I was looking for which colours to get, Stylecraft had sent me a um, colour chart of the Naturals colour but also the organic cotton so they've got another one in the naturals range which is their organic cotton there was just so many other really gorgeous colors in this color range that i thought i'm going to treat myself to some um so i did <laughs> so here are the colors i've got they are so pretty i'll get them all on screen so you can see them all now I haven't got a specific plan for these as yet, but I have got some ideas. So I'm just going to show you one of the labels, so that's what it looks like. Um, I don't think there's anything much to tell you about it, because it's just, yeah, 100% organic cotton. This is DK weight. Um, this is 50 grams worth and you get approximately 105 meters or 115 yards for that so you can see they're they're not huge cotton's quite heavy so you don't get masses in a cotton ball um but aren't they gorgeous so yeah i've got a couple of crochet motifs i'm working on that i really quite like that might turn into a blanket so maybe i'll do that but i'm not sure if i can make a whole blanket out of cotton to be honest with you i've had some trouble with my hands playing up and cotton is the worst one because it's the sort of stiffest and hardest to work with so i'm thinking it might be it's probably going to have to be smaller projects is what i'm thinking but yeah, I'm going to play around with some ideas and decide what I want to do with that. But just gorgeous. Look at these greens. In Starcraft, they quite often do like sort of the acidy, limey, apple-y greens. But they don't often do these much more muted sort of sage and avocado-y. Well, not avocado. Sort of sage and thyme and that kind of green, which is the ones I love best. Sort of more of a jadey but really subtle. Let's see what they've actually called them, that'll probably help me. This has no colour name. 
Oh, Cardoon? I have no idea what that even is. It sounds Scottish, doesn't it? Cardoon. Sorry, Scotland, for my appalling accent. Can you see that? And... Artichoke. Ooh, nice. That one's artichoke. But yeah, really love those greens. I wish they would do more greens like this in their ranges because we oh, love them. Um, yeah, so if they so they've got some colours in here that they haven't got in the bamboo and cotton range. I really wish they did. They've got this really nice subtle yellow that they haven't got in the bamboo and naturals as well. Buttermilk, that's called. Don't know why I'm showing you. Like I have to prove it. It really is. Look, it's written on it. Here's proof. Like me reading it is just, that's not proof enough. Um, yeah, but that's pretty. So, that's fun. Sorry, that's basket squeaking away. Right, I think this is going to be long, which isn't good because my upload speed is horrendous. So it takes me years to upload things. <laughs> So I better shut up and go, uh, in conclusion. Um, yeah, so thanks for being here. Thanks for sticking with me to the end, if you got to the end. I very much appreciate that. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, if you'd like to give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, if you'd like to subscribe, that would be fab. And then you can even hit the bell thing in me, Jiggy, if you want to. That gives you a notification when I post a new video. Um, so yeah, that may may or may not be of interest to you. Um, I'm babbling. Just go. Just go, Sandra. Just go. All right. I hope you get some lovely, calm, crafty moments until I see you next time. Okay. Bye.